So if you don't mind, we just might start a bit. Yeah. So thanks for coming. Not at all. First. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I thought it was interesting to actually introduce you for this uh, subject, which I just tell it again a bit more. It's about like social media and art celebrity. And uh, yeah, as I saw that you were kind of like a figure in the like Amsterdam art fashion scene, I thought it could be really interesting. But I mean, maybe you can introduce first what you do and like how you use social media and stuff like this. Um. Oh, my name is Jean Paul Paula. I am a. Do you want me to guys, do you want me to sit down like this? Am I high enough for everyone? No, you Shall can I sit stand? Up. I mean, I don't mind standing either. You can either. stand on yeah, the yeah. table as well. <laughs> well, let's not go that far. I'm not that. Not that far. Uh, my name is Jean Paul Paula. I'm 32 years old. Um, I am a fashion stylist and creative director. Uh, I grew up in Holland. I grew up in Amsterdam. Uh, I've lived in Paris, and right now I live in London. I use my social media mostly to. Make sure that people don't forget that I exist. I think that that's basically, yeah, what it comes down to. It used to be a tool to connect with people and to connect with a lot of people all over the world. I still use it as such. Um, but I think that there's different dynamics of the different tools that you can use and also different facets of yourself that you can share on different tools as well. I don't think that everything is for everyone and I tend to not use Facebook as much at all. Uh, for obvious reasons, also very apparent now, I think, in our time in history. <laughs> yeah. uh, but at the same time, I don't really like the way that they um, assume that they know you and then push a lot of information on you. I don't like my app to tell me that it's my friend. You're not my friend. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, oh, congratulations for all of these, or celebrate this and that friendship. I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't care. Like, those things really... And it annoyed me quite early on with Facebook as well. I got it when the app was still very American and still, like, on really really early on I think in 2000 like a really long time ago I have no idea um, and I actually got 5,000 friends really early on which made the, app, made the the website and the app basically useless because I couldn't delete them easily like I, I didn't know who my friends were because uh, I just accepted everyone because of what you did um, so I tend to use my Instagram much more and even that that is much more of a I get inspired a lot because I look at other people I see what they share a lot and I tend to be much more in tune with what's happening in the world than when I watch news or TV and things like that. So I use it a lot for entertainment and a lot for connecting with people. What do you do in uh, London? Like, do you work for yourself or do you work yes, for someone? Yes, yes, yes. I have always worked for myself. I feel very lucky to say that. Uh, for three years when I lived in Paris, I worked for a magazine called WAD magazine. Nice. I am a stylist. That's what I basically and mainly do. Um, but next to that I'm also a creative director and everything that comes in touch with uh, clothing I can basically either manage or do. What do you kind of define as creative direction? Um, personally for me creative direction um, geez, is kind of bas basically being able to be completely free in creating a concept and then seeing it through from beginning to end. Um, that is how I see it. I know that a, that for a fashion house, for example, a creative director could be somebody who comes in with a mood board and say, we could take this direction, or we are going to do this this season, or somebody who actually has a group of people that know how to do certain things, but the person in charge doesn't how to do those things so that it becomes one whole. Uh, and I do that connected to fashion, and I would eventually love to do that connected to film as well, which would really make it complete, for me at least. Recreating my entire and own universe. What is your like studying background? I studied business. I quit school in uh, when I was nineteen because it wasn't working. I wanted to come to an art school, but I was too shy, so I just started to work. I really believe that with my upbringing, I was not really allowed as well. I thought that I didn't know anything. Uh, so the one time that I did apply in Arnhem. Uh, I think that I only got to the second round because of how I spoke about the things that I thought that I knew, which have changed a lot now, and I would not want to be a designer. It's not for me. I think that certain people have that life and have that hunger, but I know what the lifestyle is, and I like to eat, and I like, yeah, I like to have a sane way of living where in which I don't feel crushed by society on a constant, which I think some of my friends go to as designers, so yes, it's not for me. So what do you do, like, for example, like, Recently, what have you been working on? Um, recently, I have done two Nike campaigns based on their Nigeria football kit. So their yes. new football kit that we launched. Uh, I went to Paris, where in which I did two days of pre-styling for like Coast Life, where I do the looks books. I've been doing that for about six years. Um, wow. I worked on a performance uh, for the Brits with Rita Ora, where I actually was a dresser. I didn't style it, thank God. Mm. 
<laughs> awful. Um, oh, you, well, fine. Um, <laughs> um, what else have I been working on? I uh, well, I could explain January until now. In January, I did my first full show with Nina Muna. Uh, Florian and I actually uh, directed and produced the entire thing. We did the casting, we did the styling, we did the music, we did the venue, everything. Creative direction. Yeah. Um, uh, it's very blurry January. I think that I went to Paris, I had a job there. So for me, it's a lot of actually writing emails, um, writing down concepts, um, Receiving emails, saying yes or no to certain jobs. I'm also a CV presenter and I host two TV shows. So I was finishing that in January as well. And I actually just finished that now as well. So it's been a bit... I'm sure that I forgot things in between. I shot a cover for Glam Cult. I shot a, sh a series for Glam Cult. Um, yeah. You would have to talk to my agent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a bit of a... It's nice because it's a much more like business aspect. Um, I don't think the overall overview that we can have of it. I started when I was 19. And I think that with everyone, and this has always been something that has fascinated me, uh, when, when people talk about art school, I feel like a lot of people who go to art school are really, really helped in being artistic or sometimes bullied to death being artistic or to try. Um, and they said they forget to tell you that you need to meet someone who believes in you. You need to meet someone who believes in what you can do, what is unique about you, and will help you to evolve that to a level where in which what you do can also make you eat. Because rent and food are the most important things, because without those two things, you cannot even be an artist. So this is really important. For me, I think that this realization of the need for that came um, by reading about Yves Saint Laurent and Karl Lagerfeld at the beginning of their career and how they came to where they are today. Yves Saint Laurent couldn't have done what he did without Pierre Berger who believed in him and who wanted to go to get all of the subsidies because he would not, he, I mean, honestly, he was crazy, so I mean, what was he going to do? And I think that that's reality. Yeah. I think that if you are good at something, um, or if you want to be good at something, or if you want to make money with what you think that you could be good at to really pull it very far, um, you need to find people around you that are willing to um, support you and help you and promote you. It doesn't mean that you should make your own money. It just means that if, you're, if it's difficult for you to talk about yourself, then find someone who can. But how did you find it yourself, for example? I only found her last year or two years ago. Because, just to bring it back to yes, what yes. I had in mind, it's yes. just like, do you think also like when you are actually trying to make art or whatever, yes. social media nowadays can be a useful tool to really, to really show what you do and get people interested in what you do. I think also. that anyone who chooses to not do that, to limit your art to viewers so you don't want a lot of people to see it. That might be a personal decision, but it will not, it's not necessarily something that is uh, going to help you. Mm -hmm. I think that if you understand the tool rather than dismiss it before yeah. even thinking of what it could mean for you, uh, that you could then maybe learn how to use it because it, it doesn't have to be personal. If you're a very, um, how do you say, if you're not a very open person, that might be a way for you to show a part of what you like without having to show your entire life, your dog, your food, all of this nonsense, because it doesn't have to be that. And I actually really think that, um, I think that it's important in today's world to understand these things and then make a decision, because it doesn't have to be Instagram. It doesn't have to be any of those things. You could even have your own website, which you have other people push forward. There's so many ways that we can try and connect with people. I think that dismissing technology and popular media, um, just straight off the bat, might not be the smartest thing to do. I think that a lot of people should consider it, Try and see if it's something for you. Try it out and then make a decision. Because I think it's very personal. I think that also, I expect it's a little bit more people, but I thought that there would definitely be people that maybe would think, like, this is not for me. I don't want to use social media. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's a healthy thing. I think that we are a little bit jaded. We're too much on our phones. But at the same time, I think that it's a huge source of inspiration. I think that everyone is more than ever through this social media as well, or through the, the three bigger ones, like Facebook, Instagram, and maybe even Snapchat, uh, or Twitter, to find people that are either like-minded or that they could connect to, to find a way of getting their work out there even more. You experience it yourself, like you, sh you see through social media that it helps in your like, creative work or making contact or social network? I do a lot of different things with my personal social media. Um, a part of it is, um, is fashion, a part of it's me, so a, a lot of like, um, I try, in a way I call it being body positive, not so much because I'm showing my nude self, 
I am trying to show other black people that they can be pretty. Like you don't, you don't have to care so much. And it's also fine to be gay, and it's fine to be feminine, and and uh, and to be proud of of what you look like, and you're able to show that. I, when I grew up, I think I don't think a lot of black, I didn't consider a lot of black men around me, and I think that a lot of my friends as well that were black didn't consider themselves sexy because we grew up here. We look at other people, we see a different type of um, ideal. So I really wanted to send out that regardless of what other people say and what they think or what you even might feel, this is what we look like. And we are beautiful. And you're allowed to be naked, you're allowed to be sexy, you're allowed to be sexual and all of these things. Those are all of like, and a part of this activism. So all of these different things are things that I do with my Instagram. And I've, um, one part of what I try to do is reaching people. So hopefully they get inspired or they feel um, that they're not alone. Um, the other side is being fashionable, so I try to send out my artistry, which I hope people like, um, and through that get jobs, so I'm hoping that other editors see it, people who otherwise yeah. normally not see my work, uh, and that also connects with people, people follow other people, people like other people's work, people sharing what you do. Um, actually, when I came back from Paris, I, one of the first shoes that I did was with Florian, actually, I think the first, and we made an image um, of me showing my tattoo, um, I have a lip tattoo, uh, and that image actually went viral, and I'm not saying that we got a lot of work out of that, but people did recognize some things that we do just because that happened. But is it also like building like a sense of community somehow? It's definitely a sense of yourself, I would say. Like the people that you connect with are the people that then become your hub. If you know people that you meet here, or you meet in Paris, or you meet in London, and they move to Japan or wherever else, you're still connected in yeah, that way. Yeah, of course. And if they can share your work over at that end, or mm -hmm. vice versa, that's also how that works. Without community, nothing works. Every um, successful artist has community. Mm -hmm. Every working, um, you know, even if you're a creative director, Tommy Hilfiger or whatnot, you work there because people know about what you do. That's called, you know, it's called networking, but yeah. we can do it on social media so easily. Welcome. <laughs> No, 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 don't worry, don't worry. I hope I'm answering your questions right yeah, by the way. Yeah, no, no, definitely. I mean, it's super interesting, but then from what you said, I understand that you think as well that community nowadays is mainly present on social media in general. Um, a lot of it, yes. I think that we also go out in our own social everyday life, definitely, and there's ways that we connect with the people there. Um, but a lot of the social stuff happens online. A lot of the emails that I get, mm -hmm. they do end up being one-on-ones with people or meetings. Um, but a lot of it does start out online, and I've met amazing people. I mean, I'm connecting with people from RuPaul's Drag Race just because I watch the show, and we just happen to follow each other, and, like, some things are quite amazing, and it's really nice to be able to connect with people that way. I've worked with a lot of artists, artists through Instagram as well. After Lisa, I've worked with her. Um, before Instagram became really big, I worked with FKA Twigs. I think that other artists started happening afterwards, so that... Those things happened. It yes, kind of deletes all the boundaries. Like, there's no like agents involved or something. It's exactly. Like, and really then it's up direct. to the person that you connect with and to see if they would like to connect back with you. Yeah. So, uh, how have you been using the tool exactly? Like, what steps have you been using to curate yourself? Online? I mean, in the, in the beginning, oh my god, it's so weird to talk about this. I don't really talk about this. I think in the beginning for Instagram, was, for me, it was like a popularity contest. It wasn't yeah. about as much getting as much followers as possible, it was getting the right people to follow me. Mm. so I follow them and then you hope for them to follow you back so mm -hmm. the work that you do send out for me it's most important not the amount of likes it's the people that liked it mm -hmm. yeah. because if they liked it on Instagram you used to have a part of it where people could see who you liked mm -hmm. and then people could like that as well exactly. some people turn it off I turn it off because what I like is a little bit not for everyone also because I have a lot of young girls following me now so, mm -hmm. so maybe not what they should be seeing um, <laughs> but um those paths really do get created. What, 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 sorry, which answer were we questioning? How which answer were we questioning? Wow, Jeopardy. Which question was I answering? I'm sorry. The question no. that has been Sorry, sorry, yes. You what, asked. What, how have you been, how using, have I been using it? In the beginning, I think it was a popularity contest. Right now, it's been really... I do casting on Instagram. Like, uh, I speak to models that I might not, I might not have their phone number. Uh, I literally have communication sometimes only on Instagram, not even on WhatsApp anymore. So it has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also, I think, the way that uh, all the technology works. Like, Instagram has become so easy to see what, where a person is. You can almost send them a location by sending them a selfie. So it's a bit like, there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, but mainly, I think that for me, it's kind of like a billboard of here I am. This is what I do. This is what I believe in. And you can either join me or impress me and have me follow you back. Like, entertain me with what you're doing. And that's how I'm using it. 
it's a bit of a mood board and at the same time it's a gathering like a place where I can find information it's like my Tumblr but not like connected to people and constantly evolving and this is if they do their algorithms right because sometimes it's messy <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's not really working but then you were saying that it was a nice tool to use at the beginning where mm. you could actually follow people and the yeah. right people or whatever but nowadays it's such a big thing and a yes. big mess I don't take it that serious I don't make money with my Instagram I'd rather not I'd rather make money with what I do in real life because you know that on Instagram you can put a filter you can you know do the right lighting and do all that stuff take an hour to make a selfie I don't do that it's really I mean I put a filter now just because I want my skin to be good because I haven't seen the sun in forever but uh, I don't go on doing all of those things and I don't have 50,000 euro posts and stuff like that I'm not saying that I would say no if it would ever happen uh, but at the moment that's not at all what I do with my Instagram I like to keep it quite Uh, personal because I re for me personally I think that that's the best way of showing people like look uh, I'm doing a lot of things now I'm on TV and I'm doing all those things but I am quite a real and an honest person so if you meet me and I'm a little bit like this it's because I'm a normal person I'm not like floating around on a like, cloud 27 no no I'm just working like everyone else I think it's really interesting to see how you use it because you kind of like empower it in a way but can you tell from your experience that you've already been seeing situations what it was kind of like problematic for a certain reason to do not have a presence on the social, social media because you're using it in a proper way and it's yeah. actually useful for you yeah. but have you already been seeing like discrimination so it's I a mean word. yeah 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 no no that happens all the time and that wouldn't stop me from using social media I mean the reason that I'm on it is because uh, I have a right to exist like everyone else so when that stuff happens I tend to especially growing up here I tend to see it as proof of racism If somebody wants to say and write it down, black and white, like you want to really be stupid like that. For me, it's like, okay, well, screenshot, you did that. Proof, black and white. Because I, I think people tend to think that um, it's bullying, it's super personal, that people attack you on your person. As much as I show, people don't know that much. So it's not like, oh, like what you say doesn't really hurt, you don't really pay my bills, but this is the way that I see it. I know that for a lot of other people, it's very different. And I think that cyberbullying is a whole different level um, of hurt that I have experienced early on in my career, but not through social media in this way. Um, when I first started to go to Paris when I was 19, people made a lot of pictures of us, and then you would be on a blog, and then mm -hmm. they would write things about it. Now, the sartorialist was a really big blogger back oh, yes. then. Yeah. yeah, and he made a picture of me, and he put it on his uh, blog, and it got like 10,000 comments. Like that was Yeah, it was really unheard of. And 500 were really nice and really lovely, but the other amount, I was a nigger, a monkey, um, I was a future from Africa, like, it, it was so many different things and different ways. One of them, I was an HIV victim, like, it was, like, really, it went really, really far, and I remember that really, really hurting when I was younger and not knowing how to deal with that. And I think that that type of um, personal pain, like, to really feel hurt from words that other people write, I've really learned to block it out. To really kind of say, okay, I'm not going to look at this and sometimes even say I'm going to delete this because this is not your space to be negative. And I used to do that quite a lot. And now it's more, I think also through what I share, and I share it consistently, you know that I'm gay. You know that I'm black. And if you're smart, you know to not really argue with the shit that I have to say on my Instagram. So it's a bit, I feel very safe with the space that I've created. I've been very... Um, Uh, I'm quite aware of the people that I follow. Uh, I tend to look at the people that follow me. Uh, and regardless of what they think, I still tend to post the things that I believe in. Because also doing the TV things, I post things that they don't agree with and I don't care. This is still the way that I see But it. But the TV also. thing you do, do you do it in the Netherlands or in England? Sorry, the TV? Yeah. I do, oh, thank God I do it here, not in the UK. No, 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 no. Why no, do you I'm, say so? Sorry? Why oh, because in UK, celebrity is a different thing. I think if you do TV there, then paparazzi comes after and stuff like that. And they don't do that here, so yeah. that's great. Mm -hmm. I, that I wouldn't want to do that. And then to have to do a lot of other things on TV as well, mm -hmm. I don't think that I would like that. It's not very serious. The conversations that they have are not very real. Um, and I don't think that that's something that I would like to do with, with my life. Um... So you were talking about your personal uh, yes. experience of discrimination. Yes. And also regarding social media in general, have yeah. you already seen a kind of situation, for example, or you were supposed to work with like either this artist or this model or whatever, and you just figured out that uh, the fact that they were or were not present in the social media was something bad in a way no. for them? Or? 
No, because you can you can literally from one day to the other decide to delete everything and start up completely new, new hair, new everything, new friends. Like you can do that. It's not a problem at all. I think that artists that don't have social media or don't have Instagram or are not connected in that way or not really popular in that way have a. a it's like being being a kid and being able to grow up again. Literally, it doesn't matter at all. I think if you started today or tomorrow, it has. It doesn't have to be anything as well. It just needs to be you having a good time. I think the Instagrams that are the worst are people that have no idea what they're doing, obviously. But at the same time, sometimes those can be super nice. There are Instagrams that are boring because people have boring lives and they show us their boring life. But other Instagrams can be amazing because that person who has a boring life has an amazing mood board at home. Mm -hmm. Has like a file of pictures that they go through every day and they make an amazing concept on there. Or like it, it just looks really good together. You can give structure to it. You give importance to it as much as you like, but it doesn't have to be such so heavy. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. I can go a week or a month without posting anything and then think, oh, I need to show something. I need to do something. But at the same time, if there's nothing to be seen, then why? Do you think it like Instagram, like because that's what we're talking about yes. right now, is like <laughs> is an extension of real life or is it like kind of an extra over the limit kind of life? Because I feel like this, that's kind of a weird limit. Like, I think that that's a question that can be asked, but that's literally it. It's just yeah. a question because then yeah. how do you see it? Do you know what I mean? If yeah. I'm looking at Kim Kardashian's Instagram, do I really believe that that's real life? Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> but at the same time, for like 80% it is, you know, after she's done all of the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Enhancements. But that's reality. Oh. It doesn't mean that she's not that. She's still in Japan. You know, she's still sitting there with Madonna and with whomever on the other side. That's still part of the fantasy. But that's what social media and actually the internet allows us to create. Just imagine how far we can go when it becomes virtual reality. Like, do you know what I mean? Like the possibilities as long as we are interested and want to pay for it are endless. Mm. Uh, I think for a lot of people it is an extension. That's why they live like that as well. I think for younger kids who have no clue yet what they could do with that, it's the same. Um, it's been really fascinating um, seeing how many young people follow me that have private profiles, which obviously I prefer because young girls shouldn't be, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it no, doesn't make any sense. But they still have it. They still all know how to make a selfie. Like, yeah. we were not those people when we were younger. Yeah. So I think that that's very interesting to see how that might develop and what might grow out of that. But I think that if we as adults don't take it as serious, yeah, no. do you know what I mean? Like, it's as serious as building your own website. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You could curate your Instagram the same way. Oh, and it could be an extension of your person or of your work, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. And so, the fact was you mentioned that you feel so safe. Yeah. That is something so interesting because I always feel so nervous, especially on the online world. No matter who check my page or anything like that, I feel so nervous. Don't judge me or something. Mm. So I think that feeling safe, feeling safe, is really really difficult to gain. Mm. I don't know. It's just like I, I feel like. When you assume judgment from someone else, you're judging yourself or pre like preeminently assuming the role or act action that someone's going to put onto you. Yeah. So it's just coming out of like a conditioning of like fear. Um. So it's like it's like something you have to kind of push through. Because I'm I do the same thing like on my Instagram. Like I stop posting pictures of, like, of myself and what I'm doing. So I want it to be about like the experience that I'm having, less of like about me and giving people a chance to see what I'm seeing. So it, it all depends on like your own perspective and what you want to do. Exactly. But I you know. Because in the end, this is something that I realized is well, people are going to judge anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway. And if they don't pay your rent, like, what does it really do? Like, you're not paying me. Like, you're not my boss. Like, why would you ruin my day? I'm having a good time. And this is really how I try. Yeah. I mean, I, I tend to take, I'm really, I used to be really bad at taking critique. I think that I'm a bit better at, at, at it now. But it's really kind of, are you judging me? You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit better at it now. Um, I'm really bad at taking critique, but at the same, I think at the same time, it's, um, I tend to overthink a lot of the things that I do. And when I say that I feel safe online or that I've created a space where I feel safe, and it's because the people that I follow and the people that I allow to follow me, you, yeah, if you have something bad to say, okay. Block, like, one less, <laughs> ten less. Yeah, I don't find it so hard. And the funny thing is, as well, I think, I have, I think I've got 25,000 followers. The most likes that I will get on a picture is 2,500, I think, most. That says a lot. I know that the rest of people are just looking. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, there he is again doing that, whatever. So I feel the same way. I tend to not think about it too much. And especially through that as well, expressing myself and seeing what I put out there, judging my own work or judging myself and what I'm doing, lets me edit myself as well and try to be better at what I do. 
question myself instead of having other people be like I say a lot of like thank you for your advice but no yeah no because what you say about like uh, the number of followers and the number of likes mm. is like really funny because my brother is like way younger than me and yeah. he's like super active on SoundCloud yeah. and like you know producing tunes and stuff like that Amazing. and the other day he released like this song and I was like singing anyways and I was like is it good statistics or what and he was like yeah you know you can see compared to those type of stuff you got like 50 likes compared to like the ratio of your like uh, mm. listenings and stuff and like I feel like now, like, the followers don't really matter. It's, like, really about, like, who's, like, saying yes and, like, by liking it. And just... Because this endless kind of scrolling thing is, like, really confusing. Yeah, because yeah. you might be following people, but you're just, like, I don't mm. care. Like, it's really it's really strange, like, how, like, you quantify, like, popularity. And, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really insane. It's, uh, it's what people give value to. I think that yeah, a lot of companies yeah. give value to that. A lot of people mm. spend their money on influencers yeah, and whatnot yeah, because yeah. they're basing what they have on that. Yeah. You have a reach, you know. Mm. We've also calculated this is the amount of people that will actually see it, we yeah. will promote it, all of those mm. things. And then they make deals and then they go and do what they do. But it's, it's commerciality. TV yeah. does the same, radio does the same. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we're surrounded way. by billboards everywhere. And so. do you think that the, like fashion or art industry does the same as well like I mean for example I met you for Instagram and I yeah. could find you because you were this kind of like uh, figure of Amsterdam uh, being known for being quite famous and you know that kind of stuff so yeah. you can say the very good part of it but then it's like also is it sometimes uh, yeah I mean I don't know a problem in a way in your opinion or you mean private or not private not privately but the fact people can find me like that no it's also the fact that it's more like a, I don't know I heard for example I I met a model yeah. and he told me that for example he couldn't make campaign uh, if he didn't have a good Instagram yeah and also I mean I don't know at all but I'm just like suggesting like is it the same nowadays regarding galleries or stuff like this I think so I think people judge you regardless I think that people judge other people, especially now, on based on what they see. Yeah. Uh, but what if they see nothing? That's one more. What I'm if saying. you see nothing, it's mysterious, and some people like it, some people don't. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you can't make everyone happy. Mm -hmm. What you doing? What you what you do? Uh, your work, your job, your art, um, is something that you're doing personal, and not everyone will like that. And I think that as long as you're okay with that, that then you'll be able to definitely move forward because you will find people that are are okay with it. Do you know what I mean? People that do like it. Uh, and it, you do have to think about the business part of that, which is how will I be able to promote this and then consider the options. Instagram is not the one tool you can use. There are many. Yeah. What others, for example, that I mean, you might know? I mean, other than Instagram, you can obviously just build a website. Mm -hmm. Really, really easy. Mm -hmm. You can use Tumblr. It's not that hard. Uh, and after do you think Tumblr is still relevant? Yeah. Uh, it's it's easy. It's not about relevance. It's yeah, easy to post a picture and put it on the internet. Yeah. That yeah. is what you're doing. Yeah. People can share it. People can. It's yeah. it's for children. Tumblr. I think mm. it's for really yeah. young kids. But I still get a lot of information <laughs> out of it. What kids are watching. What kids are doing. And because I follow things that I like, I see those things coming up mm -hmm. all the time. And that's what why I use it. But it's again a choice. It's not about it's not about the most popular um, media. Mm -hmm. It's about what you choose to do for yourself. It's really personal. I think Instagram is also, it can be really personal. Mm. Do you ever find it difficult to break out of like the cycle of um, cycling through um, people that you followed and finding new voices and new, uh, new inspirations? Um, I take more inspiration out of Instagram and Tumblr uh, and anime even mm -hmm. than I do from watching the TV, the news, mm -hmm. even fashion shows. Mm -hmm. I'm really bored. Well, they haven't been doing anything. So because of that, I have to find my entertainment elsewhere. And because we're so conditioned to be entertained the entire time mm -hmm. and constantly, like every time, on the bus, in the subway, everywhere I am, even walking down the street, I can be entertained. I tend to look for things that interest me. I can be going through porn to whatever on my phone. Like, it doesn't matter. Uh, and so in that term, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. It's the coffee, I think. And because maybe I'm a little bit tired, but your question? I'm as I was coming down to a point, but I forgot <laughs> what the point was. Uh, just like getting out of the cycle of like yeah, yeah, yeah. the same people on Instagram and seeing the same shit and seeing them like you know, I mean I, I do I do make sure that I get I mean I follow a lot so I get conditioned mm. quite a lot um, but there are moments that you just have to say yeah no not right now uh, those moments are rare though like I think like everyone I go to bed with my phone I wake up with my phone it's the first thing that I look at after him and the first thing that I, last thing I see when I go to bed 
uh, and that's literally the way that I kind of live with my life, but I don't add too much importance to it. Mm -hmm. It's broken. Uh, if I lose it, it would be really not so nice, but it would happen, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't die. I think for other people, it's much more, mm -hmm. a little bit more important. The, yeah. I, I was going to say the thing that I specifically like about your Instagram <laughs> and the thing that I find like really like mind boggling to me is you have the commercial aspect, but you're so fucking vulgar and you're unfiltered and you shame people and you do all of these things that come from this honest place. And I'm like, this is what I was thinking. And you know, it, it's yeah. like, I love that you do that because for me specifically, I can relate to a lot of the experiences you have. And then when you say stuff, anecdotally in passing they're like oh well maybe it's all in your head or, or something like that so it's nice when you see that concrete proof and like this one said that one about me and that that and I'm like, mm. yeah <laughs> um uh, i use it a lot for education as well mm -hmm. um at least i think i'm educating people i think there's a lot of people uh, a lot of things that we don't know about certain things that happen in the world or because we don't experience them, we don't know how to deal with it. Uh, like blackface in Holland every year. Um, yeah. Um, I've tried for a long time now um, to protest against this, to make art against it, to make people aware of it, and aware of how I think of it. And even people in, in my scene, in art, were friends of mine, Facebook friends of mine that I've lost because I write my little text every year. You know, this is fucking horrible. Like, what the fuck are you people doing? And it's, um, I do... I do believe that if I want to make a change in the world, I have to send it out. Mm -hmm. So regardless of my position, regardless of what I do, I will still send out that message. I will still make sure that people understand that um, I think that as artists, we have a responsibility to make the world a more beautiful place. And I think that it's only going to happen through inclusion. And the first thing that we should get rid of is misogyny. So, yeah, this, I make sure that I, I have a platform and I use it. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's my responsibility. Not everyone does it, it's up to them, but for me personally, yes. Yeah, so there's very much more like a, let's say, a more human part as well of you by yeah, using social of what media. I, like, it's yeah. not only lo like your vitrine or your gallery, no, like, no, no. visual. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, you'll, I think it'll be work, 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 selfie, 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 something shocking for some people. Mm -hmm. And then it'll, yeah, I think that that's what it looks like now, but I don't plan. I hate that. I've tried it. I have to do three posts, all that nonsense. No, 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 no. If the work is nice, the work is nice. If the day is good, the day is good. If the light is nice, the light is nice. If it's a nice moment, whatever, those things. I try not to... I do a lot on my video now, actually. Uh, I use it much more than Snapchat, and I tend to have conversations, arguments, fights. Really? Um, you can have, like... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Arguments on... Okay, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. A girl recently <laughs> wrote, um, made a really horrible video about how she hates gay people, and oh, yeah. she was mm. seeing the billboards everywhere, yeah, and people were kissing, and she thought it was fucking disgusting. And I was like, well, there you go. This is how people think, but they don't dare to say it. So I, I screen grabbed the whole thing. I posted it on Instagram. And I was like, so... And I tagged her. I said, what's good? Like, <laughs> do you want to talk? Yeah. I was like, do you want to talk about this? Um, <laughs> yes, she did. Well, I went through her whole Instagram. She was like, why did you post this about me? I went through her whole Instagram. I found a picture of her and a gay guy that I know. I was like, how can you say uh -huh. these things about gay people? And this is your friend. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even going into a lot of words. I just sent... She sent me a message and I sent her a picture. She's like, yes, that's my friend. I was like, question mark? Uh -huh. oh, like, do you get what this, like, do you get that you're talking about your friend? Do you know what's happening currently with the radar radio? With in those? London? Radar radio? Like, no. apparently, it's like this very underground, like, very well-respected radio in London. And apparently, like, everyone's, like, leaving it. Like, since yesterday, there's been, like, crazy posts about, like, yeah, I've been like super into radar, radar radio, but I have to leave because so you don't know exactly. Because I'm no still like really, I'm trying to like inquire. Find out. Do you know what it is about? Maybe, or? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the 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 owner of it made like homophobic remarks, okay. and he's like, but he's getting a lot of um, gay and queer inspired shows yeah. on the channel because he knows they will attract publicity. Yeah, of course. Uh, but now they're all going because of that. Yeah, because yeah. everyone, yesterday was like, yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm leaving the show, blah, blah, blah. And then this girl from uh, England, she's like, yeah, I'm going to start my own like POC radio, yeah. like uh, DIY, whatever. And like, she's trying to like gain everyone from radio, radio. Mm. So I was like wondering, so now I know. I think Pussy Palace was also streaming on there. They left. Okay, okay. They left Makes as well. Sense. I think so, yeah. yeah. That's where I heard it the first time. Okay. So you're saying that you can also have like a like 
trying to have a discussion also as well. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I mean... So it's not only like, like let's say visual, it's also much more about... Of course, of course. I mean, I don't write as much as I used to and I actually don't really believe that I'm a good writer. That's why I don't do a lot of it. But um, from time to time I tend to write a little... A little message underneath the picture as well, because they mean something to me. So sometimes I would want people to, to see what I'm saying with what I'm saying. And I don't care who you are and where you're from and how long I've known you. But if what I write offends you, I'm open to talk about it. Prove me wrong. Like, I'm right. You know, I'm open to, to discussion all of these things. And I'm not always right. Um, but very rarely people come with actual substance. Mm. I feel like the reason why I post this was, well, to educate people and not necessarily to start a fight when certain people get offended. Um... Because I do think that we live in a quite turbulent time in which um, popular opinions that you can say whatever you want about black people, but that's not the case. And I'm not the one. So, it's, yeah, I tend to get into arguments with people, especially about racism, actually. Yeah. Very practical question. Oh, sorry, mate. Wait, wait, wait. I'm just asking in a very practical sure, sure. question. Like, I've, do you have a limit, like, for, 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 for example, to say, like, in Instagram story of, like, not a limit regarding the content, but regarding, like, how many words or like pages can you go because sometimes I see people with like super long stories yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like hundreds of pages and, and so I mean I think yeah, you can actually say exactly. something really long yeah, yeah, but yeah. to what extent I'm just questioning I mean we should definitely like if this uh, meeting is about Instagram I, should, I wish uh, sorry we should definitely just go through like definitely all of the questions about those really really basic things uh, but uh, I would always keep it quite short on Instagram like a little paragraph because honestly I don't want to tap on the three dots and read a whole fucking Mm. I don't have the time. I'm on the go. The picture is nice. Like, yeah. I would say keep it compact. And if there's anything that you want people to see, put a link in your bio and have people click on that. Yeah. Because that's the easiest way. Mm -hmm. Don't put a link in your store because people can't click. People are not going to write a comment, scroll up, try and write down your thing. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Tag everyone that you can connect to. Don't do too much. Stay away from the hashtags. If you have to, then use them. But um, keep it clean. Keep it simple. And... Yeah, because in the, in the end, people are there to see and to listen. Mm -hmm. So they want to see movie images, they want to see dead image, and they're not necessarily there to read an entire book. Unless you're a writer. I mean, obviously, then it's very different. But even then, keep it tight. Don't... Um, Twitter. Yes. Don't use filters, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, because different companies design different platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, where... These are more based in the Western world, like Europe or America, and every country has its own social platform. Yeah. And every platform, the property is really, really different. And for me, it's like, I'm go maybe I have one, two, three, four, five sides. It's just like mm -hmm. I have, I'm going to show this side on Instagram, mm -hmm. that side on Facebook. Yeah. So, I feel like I'm just creating a bigger business card. Yeah. And also, but this is for what the company can provide us with right now. So yeah. I want to know what is your, what do you want in the future? Like, for example, where the media is still limited in photo than Instagram, yeah. news, Facebook, yeah. short announcement, Twitter. Yeah. Then what's the mixed Next media step. in the future and yeah. what do you feel what's, what so are you calling business. for yeah it's uh, <laughs> a good question um, I mean I'm not a very big gamer at all but I really think that there's a lot of money to be gained in that especially with the way that they're playing all of their online games right now mm -hmm. I think that virtual reality and the possibility of really having an identity in that there's a shitload of money in that I mean we've already been preparing for that happening possibly I don't think that it's a healthy thing so I'd rather not have it come, but I think that that could be a possible next step. I think that now people are still quite skeptical about it, but if Donald Trump goes to war, we won't have a choice, so virtual reality will definitely... <laughs> it's a very scary thought. Have you seen, um, actually, yeah. Steven Spielberg has made a new movie about this as well. I saw that. So show. I think that that's going to become super attractive in the future, and what, you know, all of the, um, what's it called? The safe life, that virtual reality program has had. Afterlife. Second life. Second life, oh, yes, exactly. Second life. I but think that's, that's really because it used to work really and it went down together. for certain reasons. Yeah, yeah because it's not, it wasn't, the technology wasn't moving fast enough, I think. But yeah, virtual reality is with, uh, I think it might come in the future. I hope not. Um, but to what extent, for example, would it be useful regarding what you do? I mean, well, how would you I've, see that? I've then? seen 
Well, to to work, you mean? Yeah, it's like you this... could you could sell clothes in that digitally oh, yeah, made true. clothing. Um, you, if people would want to do a house, yes, 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 yes. You try them. And you <laughs> I mean, I've seen a document. I saw a documentary two years ago. Remember that we saw about so that guy that had a relationship and he was married online. Yeah, yeah. He had a clothing business. He had a house. Like, <laughs> he lived off of doing that. Um, even the whole Bitcoin idea. So yeah. I would act. I, but I think that in that extreme, there will be a, uh, an extreme for the opposite as well. People who will try and put the phone down a little bit more yeah, or actually use it, it yeah or actually use it for something that um, a little bit more useful and a little bit more connected with other people mm-hmm. so I think the connected um, the idea of connection the idea of being able to send files bigger files easier being able to do work through a lot of things um, mm-hmm. I think that those things are becoming quite uh, more interesting to do being able to have um, better group meetings as well if you're doing an international call mm-hmm. with whomever, those things will need to change and get better as well, especially for companies like Nike and what whatnot. Um, but I think more than anything, um, uh, I think that copyright and source are becoming really, really important as well. Mm-hmm. I think that a lot of kids tend to accumulate a lot of information but not know where it came from. Mm-hmm. Um, the 80s are not that long ago, but it's almost like we didn't save all of the data, 70s, 60s. So people have an idea of all of these things, but they don't know which year Sean Paul Gucci did that show. So that dress was already made then. Or that is how they made that with actual craftsmanship and not the shit that we do now sometimes. So I think that a lot of that is going to come back. A lot of love for quality Mm -hmm. over quantity and also um, much more real person. So not like this Rick Owens type type of like... Do you know what I mean? Like really closed off type of person. I think that we're gradually growing away from that internationally as well because these apps really are connecting us internationally. We know what's happening in Paris mm-hmm. and in LA and in Tokyo at the same time. Okay. We go to Istanbul, to South Africa and to the North Pole. It's all, what are you doing today? I did that. Ah, so is, is, is it like uh, at the beginning of the internet is developing, is making the distance further, like you are creating one pretty fake you yeah. online yes. and now you feel like the tendency is going to be back to the personal real person. yes 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 yeah I yes. feel the need yes like exactly there's a need for it because I think that people are really starting to, to be tired of this yeah. you know butt filled you know like it's like really there's so much of it there's so and they all look the same I tend to really want to see somebody who's not perfect I'm like oh wow you were born that way wow bless you yeah. do you know what I mean it's, even like a few years back yeah. in Holland it was almost impossible to find a girl with her natural hair now you see, you know you see these girls popping around again, and um, mm. I think a lot of it is changing as the world is changing. A lot of stuff is going bad now, and I think that the reverse of that is that a lot of people want to see good things as well, positive yeah. uh, things for people as well, not necessarily for everything. But oh, she's living a good life. Oh, he's happy. I don't know. It's a bit far fetched, but I think that those things people are finding are quite important. They look at a really boring Instagram like, oh, the sun is shining. I'm happy today. Because it helps. it's also like people tend to take it like not seriously like your image online and stuff mm. like that but you can't ignore it like nowadays it's impossible to ignore it like it's here yeah 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 like you have to deal with it and you have to use it in the best way possible exactly but it depends on what you're selling as well yeah. it really are you a model are you an actor are you mm-hmm. a do you know what i mean like all of those things play into it and mm-hmm. for most directors for example instagram is useless yeah. like what are you mm-hmm. going to show you can't show yeah. anything no that's true so it's more of a social connection thing um for certain celebrities use it as an update so they don't have to do a press release. Like, It's really easy for, for uh, celebrities to use, but it's also a really good working tool. Mm-hmm. Are there any more like... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, of course, I, I, of course. I have, I have yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you mind if I sit? Can I sit? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, chill. No, I was just like thinking, since Instagram this like, last two years, I would say it's been changing and they uh, uh, introduced advertisement. Um, how do you feel about posting your work where you put uh, effort and yeah time and then you don't get any money from Instagram but then you know Instagram is get, getting money with it and you're imposing that actually um, me personally I take off of all of the advertising like I tend to say it's not for me it's not for me because you can actually choose it so I don't have to see what they do with it but I know that that's what they do with what it is that I send out there um, but I I look, I, what I get back from Instagram is bigger than what they do with mm-hmm. what they're making. 
um, uh, yeah, that's really the way that I see it. Because they, they need all of us to be able to do that the right way. They make a lot of money, but they need all of us to do it. Uh, so it's, if I'm a thousand of a, or a millionth of a cent that they're making from, um, the, actually, the actual gain that I get, even being able to sit here and talk to you guys, I add way more value to that than um, the little bit of money that Instagram is making. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I really believe that if, if we don't agree with certain things or if you, me for example, I sometimes, uh, I work for companies that are not really kosher. Like I know that where they get their money or where their products are made is not really correct. But I still make the money that I do with them, hopefully working on a project where in which I still get to push other things like is the cast diverse? Are we have you considered these things? Because I tend to send that imagery out there as least at least as for that being po um, positive, and then with the money that I make as well, I try to do positive things. I try to I try to be active. I try to survive, and I try to hire people or educate people, make sure that people get paid that really deserve or need to be paid as well. I mean, really, sometimes it's buying bananas at Albert Heijn. It's like, do you know that they don't come from the right place because they're only one euro? Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of things in the world that are like that. A lot of things are not really correct anymore, but it's up to us to see if we can, well, up to us. I see it as uh, something that I would like to see changing, so I need to understand them, learn about them, take steps to do them, and all of those things come with either having a voice, money, power, any of those things. So I am trying to reach as many people as, can, as I can with what I do. And then from then on, we can see if that develops or not. I'm happy right now, in this moment. So what can come after this, we'll see. Of course, of course, yes, yes. Yeah, I was just wondering, because when you were mentioning virtual reality and stuff, it, and you mentioned the word copyright, I yeah. thought it was a really interesting yes, subject, yes, because yes. nowadays, because of social media, I mean, I've already heard about a lot of scandal regarding fashion, yeah. because of people stealing people's ID. But the yeah. fact is, like, once you start posting something on the internet, then, I mean, like, how do you think it can be, I mean, if it gets bigger in the future, Yeah. how are we going to deal with it, that kind of copyrights questioning and... I think the same lawsuit that's happening with Mark Zuckerberg right now, um, I think the art world is at one point going to say, look, we make a lot of money. Right now we're not making the same money, so we would like that. So we need to consider the rules and how we've made them up now. The thing is, is that when you're, when, if you have a good idea, it's really hard to copyright it if it's not something that is like this. Um. Do you know what I mean? It's not something physical. It's not... It's on the wall. It's, it's a lighting. It's your way of shooting a certain thing a certain way. An artist, a musical artist can come and take your idea and make a music video. You can sue if you like, but that whole process has become quite annoying to do. That costs money, it costs time, it costs so much effort. Um, so a lot of people tend to either not sue or see it as a compliment or laugh it off. But when Drake did James Terrell, he made it very publicly known that he didn't do that. Um, that is part of the world that we live in. To a certain extent, it's kind of up for grabs. And then it's up to you to see to what steps do you want to take to do that. But also, I think, in the future, um, I think that sourcing will be... So knowing where your thing comes from, that knowledge will be valuable. And I also think that copyright will be something that will become... not I hope not more complicated, but more uh, protecting of what people do. And I think that we need to do that as artists as well. We have to one day say, look, there has to be a book, an international book for how we deal with these things, what we can and cannot do. Do we give the Mona Lisa back to Italy? Like, <laughs> things to think about. I mean, because when you yourself, for example, have inspirations or if there's something that you really get inspired by, yes. do you sometimes, like, think about mentioning it or something like this? Or do you think it's really, like, internet is free and you can take or give whatever you want? I think it's important to tag the person that did it, to write that they did it, even... If you don't like them, it's important that people... Well, no, if not if you don't like them. But more, the majority of the time, I make sure that they know that it's not my work and somebody else did it. Yeah, I think that that's very important. On my Tumblr, it's actually a mess. At one point, I decided that every image that I posted on my Tumblr would be sourced and written who did it and all these things, but it's too much. Uh, so that's not, that never happened. But I do think that that information is going to become really valuable. I think somewhere some genius is being born right now that is literally on Google every day, just getting all of that information in about a certain subject and really, like when you meet them, they'll be able to tell you everything and they're nine years old. I think that that's um, the way education should be changed now on how we um, teach children how to search, how to, you know, accumulate knowledge and not just um, porn.
and the funniest video of the day. And because it's, videos. Yeah, yeah, because as mm-hmm. we're talking about this and as we're thinking about, oh, what could be the best Instagram for us, there's so much garbage out there in the world. I yeah, call it true. imagery That's what pollution, I was about to say, honestly. How to teach also like what you mm. take and do not take, specifically regarding arts, regarding inspiration, you know, yeah. because there's also so much going on that at the same time it can be the nicest mood board. Yeah. But also it could be just like so misunderstanding because there's so many stuff and so many stuff that are look exactly the same. Yes, 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 yes. And I think that's specifically it. Like when you actually look at like what fashion is or what you can see there's definitely tendencies. Yeah. And when these people are figures and that they work well, you're really tempted to actually go to that side. Yes. Because you're like, oh, this is what works. Yes. These, pers- these people are famous in a way yes. or I mean acknowledged in the like art of fashion industry and you're really tempted to just go for it, you know. It's um, the comfort of being part of something that um, seems to be working or the norm core. You just you buy into you can buy into a lifestyle you can buy into anything really really easily and people tend to do that to try and find their own identity which is great but you need to read the book do you know what I mean why are you acting like a vampire you don't even know what vampires do mm-hmm. like yeah if you read one sentence of a thing you didn't read the whole news bulletin you just read the sentence above the header that you could have clicked on so I think that those things that has to change and I think that that's a very big part of people that tend to unconsciously just consume ideas and consume fashion or consume imagery and not really know what they're doing with it so they don't really know where it comes from or what it means all of these things and also things that we question was this photographer abusing this model on this picture do we still add value to that do we respect it because it's art Mm. i think these are all things that you know they come into play with um with who you think you are and what you, what you want to send out there, if you really got to think about it. And do you think yourself, when you're like trying, as you said, to take inspiration from the social media or something, that you might be involuntary stuck into something that it could be... I mean, because I mean, just it's, it's because it's from my personal experience, yeah, but yeah, if yeah. I just look at fashion photography, you can say that there's certain types of things that you're just like, oh, okay, then I'm going to do it. And you don't even consider the fact that sometimes you just want to get out of it and try to create something new. Exactly. I mean, do, do you sometimes try all to... The time, I think all the time with artwork. I think what, what I often fight against with being a stylist is am I copying this look or mm-hmm. am I actually creating something new because I want to create something new. But I feel like I need to understand why I like what I saw so much to be able to, for it to evolve. So I think it's great to copy something and then learn how to make it better. Because mm. that's what people want you to do. That's what teachers should teach you to do as well. Yeah. I failed at being the best. I'm here standing in front of you because I'm better at teaching you how to become the best version of yourself. You gave me option A. And now how can we make option A, option A.1? Like the upgrade, the best version of it. And I think that this should be a question that people should ask themselves. So you think that it's like necessary at some point to be this kind of like... A person that just observes and kind of like do not in- elaborate that much to actually because I, I've wrote this interview somehow about a, a girl who was a fashion photographer and she was being asked this question about social media and the question was what would you advise to people who would love to like have a seat in the photography world or whatever she was like wait for being at your best be- yes. before showing anything yes because you have to be proud of what you show but that's if you want an agent yeah it doesn't have to be necessarily be like that um, I feel like photographers that became really became really big not just overnight. It's years of work. Mm. It's months of not sleeping and editing and being broke and eating noodles like all this shit. And that's reality of it. And that's only if you're not rich. But um, in the reality, I think that um, you can at any point choose to delete everything and start fresh. If they saved it, they saved it. If they didn't, it doesn't exist to them. So you can still choose to either do a new identity or this is how I evolved. This is what I'm doing now. But you need to try. Try now. You're in school now. Now you can fall. You can stand up. Don't care about your, you know, your, the other students. Don't care about your teachers. It's your journey. This is your life. So if you make the mistakes now, you can always say, I graduated. Deleted Instagram. This is the new me. I decided <laughs> to switch things up. I have not deleted everything because for me it's like a time mm-hmm. lapse. I can go back and I'm like, oh yeah, I was doing that. <laughs> oh yeah, I knew those people. Oh yeah, I knew this. Um, sometimes they're great memories, sometimes they're not so great, but it's still, I can see what I went through to see where I am now to also hopefully and find out where I want to go eventually. Yeah, I think that's really important and that's something that social media doesn't show that much. It only shows like the success now yes. and how it goes. But yes. then you just feel like, but how, how, 
how did they get there? Yeah. How's, and it's not a trial and error, like trial and error, trial and error. The, the amount of times that I've gotten up, fell down, flat faced, <clears throat> gotten up again and just said, you know, we have to do this. We have to get through this day. It's, I don't, I think people, because we post so many of the, so much of the positive, so much of the, oh, good day, good day, good day, that you tend to not see. Like, if I don't post for a month, shit went down. <laughs> you can tell. I'm scarred, something's going on, <laughs> like, something happened, but yeah, shit went down. Um, but I think, I think it, it really shouldn't be something that you fear, otherwise you shouldn't use it. Um, I think that it's for everyone, because it's personal, and as long as you make it that, it will be unique regardless. Um, I think if you want to be a encyclopedia, you know, if, if you just want to <laughs> make other people's work visible on a nice kind of homework, just tag them if you like. Make sure that you can inform people to show that you are intelligent and you know what you have because if people see this and they actually gain information from you, they might invite you to come and talk to them. And that could mean a financial income, it could mean a step, it could mean finding out what you would like to do, it could mean learning something about it yourself while you speak. I really see going forward like that. I don't really take it too serious, but I do see the options that are available through it. And it's like only, I mean, I mean I'm just asking, but like yeah, it's yeah. mainly Instagram so far that you're using. Um, I use Instagram, I use Sumler, I have Snapchat, but I don't like it so much. Uh, I use that mostly for the filters that I then take and put on Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. What else do I have? Do you use Twitter? Twitter? Yeah. I have it, and I only have it because I tend to read some other people's shit sometimes. But yeah, why do I funny. feel like Twitter is kind of like dead or something? It's a little bit dead because of Donald Trump, and also because it's yeah. people just attack you on it. A lot of people have yeah. fake profiles. It's really easy to make. And um, if they choose, they can really try to destroy you on it. And yeah. yeah I've been lucky up until now. Because I, I say some shit. But people... It's been really limited. I have to say that now though, um, in Holland, there's this thing that you don't really say white people. Mm-hmm. That's it. You don't say that in Dutch. Um, but it's correct to say vitamins Because blank, what they call themselves, is clear. It's like, it is like the, the glass bottle. And that's not correct. Mm-hmm. So, because this country is so old and with the history, um, we're, we're learning a lot of new ways to speak to one another and also to kind of demand respect. And on Twitter, I, I, this is the type of message that I kind of send out on that. I share a lot of um, news bulletins, political things that I run into, um, models that I like, but it's also a lot of what's going on in my head. And most of it I actually don't post. Like the... It gets pretty dark if you put it on black and white, and then I, I tend to delete it a lot. Because, uh, yeah. So yeah. Um, I have this thing that a lot of people have. If I'm not sending out a perfect message, I'd rather not send out anything. Uh, if I'm there to start a fight, I need to want to finish it as well. So if I'm doing that, then I need to think about the consequences that might come, and then if I want to do that as well. I don't believe in just putting something out and just leaving it to do whatever. No, 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 no. If I say something and people want to call me all these different names, I have to want to do that as well. And I don't have that very often on Twitter. But yeah, there's WhatsApp, there's Instagram, there's my Manga Rock, manga. there's Twitter, yeah, man. What's Manga Rock? Manga Rock yeah. is where I read my anime. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's Shazam, uh, my manga, I'm sorry. Um, geez, what else? I have a runway. I have a VFAS app, which is shit, so I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Yeah, what is this thing? It's supposed to be a way that VFAS can do the same thing that Instagram is doing right now. They want to use your imagery to be able to promote what they're doing. Also, they would like to build a community. They hope that if it would be interesting for you to share your stuff with each other on it, that you then will also buy from the store. It's not a bad idea. They just need to market it better and just do it yeah. overall better. It's just not very well done. Snapchat has turned into BuzzFeed, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's It's terrible. a little bit strange. So I don't get that either. Facebook has become unsafe. So I've deleted that off my phone. Yeah, uh, uh, it was really hard reaching you then because uh, I had yeah. to like, ask for your mail and stuff. Then. Yeah, because I also don't open it very often on my computer, but I, I just decided, because I don't use it very often at all, mm. so I just decided to, to stop it. But it's funny because at the same time I feel like uh, Facebook could be the more like easily used mm-hmm. for, well, if you, if you put your profile in public, yeah. it could be the more easily... Um, uh, like accessible to actually make, a, let's say, like a political statement or whatever, because you can yeah. like write super long stuff, at image videos, whatever. Yeah. Like more than, let's say, Snapchat to my, I mean, to my understand, or Instagram, because for me, Instagram is so like visual yeah. that you don't 
connect that much to the content. I know exactly what but you mean. But it's so weird that it feels like it's the only thing that we're so likely to you be used for that as well. Mm. And that it's just gone down and now it's like Instagram or yeah. Twitter, but Twitter is so short that you can yeah. like have a proper discussion. I, I used to do it for ages on, on Facebook because I wanted to talk to the people that followed me and whomever else about a lot of things. But what I realized is on Facebook it becomes way too personal. People can see who my family is and all of those things. Yeah. So I'd rather not. I still do it. Um, and I'm happy that I did it early as well because I lost a lot of friends on Facebook, which was great. Or follow me as much as you like. I don't give a fuck. Um, but I had really, really heavy discussions on Facebook with a lot of people, even family and relatives, and uh, it's gotten to a point where in which the reach of the message is only the 5,000 people that follow me because uh, people, you can click it away as well if I write stuff. You can unfollow the stuff that I post. And on face and on Instagram, uh, it has much bigger, bigger reach. Much, much, much bigger. Yeah, true, but I mean, now we're talking about it in that, like the future, like social media. I think yeah. that also having this kind of social media that would be purely about uh, your political statement or whatever yeah. could be nice as well. I mean, there would be a lot of bullshit as well, but yeah. it would be also a nice like platform to actually have this kind of like either like chat rooms or... It, well, it, ex it, it exists, and I think that a lot of the KKK and all of those things no. use a lot of things like that. But <laughs> what, 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 what website, for example, are you like... Um, um, like, well, Facebook group is really great. Though. Yeah. If it's private, yeah. like there's no content. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm That's more I'm more saying about people around the world that you could easily uh, get to talk to about subjects. Yeah. That's what Facebook. Group a lot does. of Facebook group is that. Yeah. Like there's not. Like, there's yeah. There's not oh, a lot yeah, of. Oh, true. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I was thinking about messenger group, but no, uh, okay, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. You have like, groups for everything, and you have like secret groups as well. Yeah. Yeah. Private true, true, groups. True, like out of control. Uh yeah, I think that to a level it's. I don't, yeah, I tend to stay away from that. I tend to really scatter and make sure that I get my information the way I choose. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like when you watch news nowadays, it's a little bit like, okay, they have an opinion and they really want you to agree. So I tend to um, loosely uh, follow the networks that I think will at least give me like an update, like that's what's happening. And then the rest of it, I'll accumulate here and there mm -hmm. and where I get my news or my information from. Or even the things that make me Google a certain subject as well to read to see what's going on. Like to see the whole courtroom situation, whatever, because in America they show you everything. The world is very scary. <laughs> yeah. Are there any other questions about Instagram? I'm really bad as well. I feel like I know nothing, actually. No, um, it's really, it's really fine. I have a comment. Um, Go ahead, bro. I, I think maybe you talked about it, but like, in all of this, what I think we have to remember as well is... As is the case with anything, it depends on how you use it. Yeah. So, like, you work in fashion. I've done a lot of stuff in activism. I don't know where I would be without social media. Like, I can say that hands down. Yeah. So, it depends on how you use it. Especially yeah. if it's a situation where you're coming from a place that's relatively unknown. You don't have a lot of finances to do 200 flyers. 300 television appearances, stuff like that. Like, half of the stuff we did in social media because you just click, 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 yeah. click. Yeah. Do you think it really works in a way? Because now, when I think about it, uh, about, like, time where there was no, like, social media or whatever, because I feel like it's kind of, like, creating the opposite in a way. Like, you can tell that there's events on Facebook mm -hmm. where people are all like, yeah, we're going to manifest or whatever, but other people have this freedom to actually express themselves on social media, yeah. they feel less likely to actually go on the street and say things with their own voice, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's amazing, but I mean, maybe you, you can tell me because you're working in this kind of... I thing. can only speak from my personal experience. It's worked for me for volumes. Yeah. It depends really also what you're sending out. If it's a party, it's a party. If it's um, if it's a manifestation, if you want to go and... Um, how do you call that? Um, Demonstrate, uh, like no one here is Dutch. If you're going to demonstrate, if you're going to do a manifestation, so you want to fight for somebody's rights and stuff like this, you still have to make sure that you accumulate the right people around you that are interested in the same thing to spread the word. Mm -hmm. This is what these things are for. Yes. And that sure. only works like that. You cannot just post something and expect people to come. No, 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 sure, no, sure. Yeah. But it was more like a general way of like seeing how activism and like yeah, yeah, manifestation yeah. That's very. That has changed. Day. That has changed completely. That has changed completely. Um, but it, that is... I think that's to do with a lot more than just Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of the young generation is jaded. I think a lot of people are uninformed and don't know what's going on around them or don't care because it's not affecting them. And this is the world that we live in today. A lot of people are very comfortable, um, so they don't feel the need to be informed or to do things because it's not happening in their backyard. 
I think people here get really angry when a new, um, wow, when a new um, immigrant center is being built close to their uh, city or in their city. Uh, and they'll, you know, they'll get up and be angry about that and they won't care why the people are there and how we affect where these people are from as well and stuff like that. They don't care. I think that's a huge issue. And I think, yeah, sorry, go ahead. And no, for, no, for your asking. example, for example, are talking about activism and stuff, mm -hmm. like what is your, what is the media that you use the most or? Um, well, early on Facebook, because mm -hmm. you reach a whole bunch of people. But now I think YouTube and Instagram. Yeah, YouTube also. Yeah, yeah you, YouTube is huge because like YouTube, I think, well, I'm not sure how it goes, but like the streams are curated. So you put in gay, like everything gay related comes yeah, up. Yeah, you yeah. Put in, so it, it's perfect. It's actually like, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. tend to do it a lot on my computer, but YouTube is really, uh, it's where I get my entertainment, my life, my death, everything. Information, a lot of information. But it's funny, like, I mean, because I don't know about this part, but I feel like uh, the art world, yeah. like fashion, photography, whatever, yeah. is, I mean, maybe it's just me, I have the impression that it's, YouTube is not touched that much by these kind of areas. In the way that the people that succeed the most or a figure of YouTube is more like, let's say, like people yeah. that are made like a kind of like a scenery of their own life, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More than the art world in general beauty blockers no 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 <laughs> no <laughs> yeah well, when you think yeah, about yeah. beauty for example yeah you could but definitely be connected to art and fashion yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. No, no, you never see you yeah. never really see kim, kim k without our contour on so like i, I mean i don't know I, well what you, you know <laughs> show studio has a, a youtube channel who show studio i don't know it. um show studio is a very big creative direction agency in uh, the United Kingdom. It's run by Nick Knight. He's one of the biggest photographers, biggest fashion photographers of all time. Um, he's actually made his channel into a, a, quite a platform where in which he showcases British fashion. They discuss fashion. Um, he obviously has a love for it. He interviews models. It's really based on the industry and all of that. But I think that art and the art world is connected to either Vimeo or YouTube because you need media to be able to show what you do. Mm -hmm. And you can still make quite a lot of money through it as well if you get a lot of views. So, uh, to be fair, I think that the art world and every way of showcasing the different types of artistry that exists has its place on any type of media that exists now. Yeah, true. If Vimeo, it's not something that is super like... Because you can protect. Yeah. Vimeo is a website where you can type in a password to see a video. Mm -hmm. And it's why it's not popular, but it's being used quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also like like I think what you talk about like this very certain kind of art world that is like very gallery based. Mm -hmm. I think that's like a context that lives very much from the idea of being exclusive and not being accessible to anybody. Like if you buy an artwork, you don't really need to have it. It's not a necessity. The the idea of having that artwork is that it's mine and that only I own this. Uh, so like this part of the art world is still very old school yeah. and hasn't moved out of this idea of like elitism yet. Yeah, but I think that's interesting because I also follow some <coughs> like kind of like contemporary artists mm -hmm. that they are self free like this is me in my gallery. Schlingsief. Like Schlingsief made like a whole like big brother kind of he was like this German activist artist. He made like I think ten years ago, twelve years ago, like a whole YouTube kind of uh, big brother thing where he I think promoted Austrian people to vote uh, refugees out of the country. And whoever like would stay in the Big Brother house would then be the refugee that would stay in the country. And he made like a whole art protest out of it. It was amazing. I think people do it, but it's still. I think I feel the art world moves much slower than fashion does and than music does. Like art is always a little bit behind. They think they're the front runners, but to be fair, art quite often stays a bit in the back, especially when it comes to contemporary social movements. I think. Because who buys artwork? Who's able to afford? something for 2.7 million is usually somebody who's rich and white. Well, there's a lot of people that are able to do that, but the only thing is like, getting that client. Mm -hmm. I think that even buying art and the idea of what it is today is very contextual. It changes constantly. Mm -hmm. So the things, and you know, you, you, we've got Basel, Miami Arts Basel, darling. Mm -hmm. It's a party. Yeah. You know, you go there, everything is sold. It doesn't matter. People will come and they will buy. And that's a part of the industry, but it's a choice. Do you want to be that type of artist? Is that what you want to do in the world? It's not a bad choice. It's just it's one of the many options that you have. 
there's no blueprint to life. There's no blueprint to the best way to do anything. There are options and then you can choose to do them or not. The only thing I think is very, very important is to see the options that are there. Feel if it's for you, if it's not really clear. But also inform yourself. Read about it. It's, do you like this? Do you want to go and be a celebrity like that? Or do you want to be more behind, you know, like, uh, not behind, but more private? Because these are choices you can make. I know stylists that put nothing of themselves on their profiles, only the work. That's great. I know for a fact that when people Google you, which they always do, uh, or going on Instagram, they actually would like to know who it is that liked their pictures or who it is that follows them. So they like to see who you are. But that's also, again, a choice. Like, I respect people that don't put your children on Instagram. Do you know what I mean? I respect that. I also find it... I can't say that I find it entertaining, and I don't even understand that I can say that I get it, but there are people out there that put their babies on Instagram. It's a personal Instagram. Like, their dog has an Instagram. It's like, okay, like, if that's what you want to do. Because above a certain amount of followers, you make money. Huh? Like, after that, it's just like, it's fine. They'll contact you. It's like, do you want to make some money? Yeah, no. I get people contacting me all the time. Great Instagram. If you want, we can make sure that you get more followers. I don't even open that message because you've got the message you receive in the private ones, mm -hmm. the requests. Yeah. Sometimes I just delete because it annoys me to see it. It's like, no, I'm, I'm not interested. And you look at their Instagram and it's like really bad. It's like, oh, yeah. It's like, you know how, but then you didn't do it for yourself. Come on. Uh -huh. It's a little bit strange. But I think it's interesting because it goes back to the like content of what this education is about. You were saying that it's a choice that you can make, but at the same time, I feel like it's I don't know. I don't know about the fashion. Well, I think more the, for the fashion industry than the art world itself, because as you said, it's much more in the contemporary social life. Yes. But I don't know. I kind of. I mean, we had this discussion one day. Like, you kind of have the feeling that you need yes, yes, to yes. be present. But that's social. Otherwise, no that's social time. pressure. Yeah. You like, guys like regarding the like fashion or whatever. You actually have uh, contact to some for someone to see you, as you said, for something to. You need like if you don't do it, nothing's gonna happen. Do you know who you need today? Like you're in school. What what year are you in? What year are you doing? First year? First year. The most important thing is each other right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's the context in the future. Exactly, yeah, the darling. Be Honestly, the with. people that you like, the people that you're friends with, they, you know, I'm not saying that... They, yeah, like, if they move back to where they're from, that will always be a bed. Mm -mm -mm. That's number one, because it's important to travel. It's really important to go and to try. If you don't go and if you're not starving, you didn't do anything. Do you know what I mean? If you choose after school at work at McDonald's, that's your choice. But I think it's really important to learn from each other, uh, help each other because you need help if you're in the school. Help each other where needed because yeah, sometimes it becomes stressful. Sometimes you can't do it in time, but your life depends on it because it's your work and you know you need somebody to, to iron or to sew or to edit anything. You can ask to direct your creativity, to direct the end result. Doesn't mean you have to do everything in it. It means sometimes ask for help. How do I do it? And this is the base for now, and from this moment on, you can choose and see how you want to develop. But I would say try your things also now. Get out there, talk to people, find out how does your gallery work, who do you like to talk to, what, what is your opinion. Now you can ask. After this, they expect you to be done. You're not supposed to be, but they expect it. After you graduated from the Reed Fault, you still developed. We're still developing. And that's it's a constant, yeah. I also know, like, I think it really really the quality of your work matters like I know photographers that came that are much younger than me have no social media present and they work like four times as much and are like popping right now I think as long as your work is good and you do find an outlet in some sort of way yes it's fine it's just the only thing that doesn't work is like you sitting in your room and waiting for people to discover yes, yes, you yes 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 but if, if you, like I think it's so important if Instagram doesn't feel natural to you or you're like sort of scared of it go out there it. yeah it doesn't, doesn't need to just be go out of your door then organize and, yeah. like a gallery have like a meeting do like a Skype gallery like there's so many ways yes where you can have it in a safer place where you know the community that you place it in mm -hmm. yeah but to do it like that's that's really what's, what's important and you have to take a risk yeah, 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 constantly. Like you have to be willing to... Even if it's just by doing it is the risk, do you know what I mean? Like, not so much sending something out there, but making the work that you're working on. That already for you might be the, the exciting part. Do that. Do that and then see if you're happy with the result. If you're happy with it, you share it. If you're not happy with it, you save it because you've learned how to do this one thing. You've went through this process. And from a commercial aspect, I work with a lot of brands like Converse and Nike and we do like plans for them about like you should use these kind of people for these kind of campaign or you should um, sponsor this person. 
last year it was all like based on their followers and like how much in, uh, Instagram person had placed this person. And this year they all went back and were like, actually we want people that have like no Instagram person that are like really unknown because that's sort of now the new cool thing. Mm. And it's just like all of this, like don't take anything too serious. It just yeah. will go up and down and yes, sort of yes, find yes, yes, your yes. way that feels good for you. Yeah. Like, also, I think if you don't take it too serious, you will see these things coming because you will get annoyed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, Insta famous, you know, I don't care. If you don't care, nobody cares. Oh. I have the feeling always like people who tell you or oh, you need to have like a social media presence are either people that don't really get social media yet mm -hmm. or that are not very good at it. Because once you, when once like Sean Paul is really good at it and he sort of knows where it can help him but it, that is not building his career at all. No. No, no, no. I don't have an Instagram career. I'm not Instagram famous. You know, I actually work. I have, you know, I don't have a 9 to 9 but I mean, I work very, very, very frequent. Um... This is just something that entertains me on the side. It's literally just a hobby. Yeah. And I don't... Uh, I like it, but I would not really need it to survive also. Yeah. It's easy to find me. That's the thing. That's why I have it. Yeah. I, it's my tree. Yeah, yeah, that's literally why I use it. And it's an easy connection tool. If you can find me on Facebook, you can find me there. It's, it's, everything's my name, so it's really easy. Okay, well, I think it's a nice, like, ending point. No worries. Well, thanks any a other, lot. Do you guys have any other questions? Yeah, maybe you have other questions. No? no. Right. Was there anything else that you wanted to ask, regardless of this Instagram thing? Because we started it off a little bit differently. No, it's just that like, I'm just thinking about my own Instagram and how, like, my culture <laughs> But then it's like, I always find this feeling of, like, battling my ego and, like, how much do I want to show? How much am I feeding into this, like, instant gratification? And, like, when I was younger and had Instagram, I loved it. I was obsessed didn't yeah. leave it yeah and it's like i was like addicted to seeing like those all those red hearts yeah yeah yeah. but i'm like no what is this really and now i'm like going through all these other changes i'm like do i want to still pursue my work through this kind of media through this lens and sort of deciding where do i begin and where does this personality kind of start mm -hmm. and how do i meld the two together yeah. so that's sort of where i'm coming from that's i mean if if you really really want to look at it in a different perspective i would say literally just log in on your computer get that what it looks like take that off of the computer and put some pictures in it to see what it looks like mm. or just edit some pictures to get it to see what it looks like if you really want to go that far yeah. Mm. Yeah. but I would really recommend not taking that too serious and really focusing on craftsmanship in real life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then see how the two mold together because it mm. is you I assume that you want to show eventually and also this you know like if you're fighting with your own ego ask a fucking friend like bitch can I post this like what do you think is this too Fact. much <laughs> yeah Fact. 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 and don't always listen because it really is about how you feel about yourself and you shouldn't care so much about mm -hmm. what other people think yeah because you made it sound so serious just now <laughs> yeah, no 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 but this is how kids think I'm, I'm, I really think that kids nowadays think about it like that They're like oh my god like you see somebody else post, you're like damn I wanna you know damn you know I wanna also mm -hmm. or <laughs> and it's not always about that. Sometimes it's really just mm -hmm. like have a genuine moment, just like whatever. If your yeah. family likes it, they liked it. The fuck? Like, yeah. yeah. And don't be afraid of sending a message to somebody you like. You see somebody's work that you like, send them a fucking message. <laughs> I've worked with amazing people through just having the balls and be like, wow, that's, you know, like really amazing and vice versa. You know, it can be an editor, it can be an art dealer, it could be anyone. Like, if you like their taste, uh, if you share, have anything in common, don't be afraid to say hi. This is also what it's for. Yeah. Hello, I'm this, like, that's how I answer your message. Yeah, and like, I thought it was really nice seeing you that accessible, actually. I mean, when it's... I actually care about doing things like this. This is why I put my agent on, I was like, please answer her email. And I don't care what setting it is, I don't care how official or unofficial it is. Somebody actually wants me to come and talk about shit that I know. So yeah, I would love to come and share the information that even now I feel guilty about maybe not sharing enough of what you actually wanted to know and just talking about a lot of other stuff. So no, no, I, I love to, to have these conversations and also learn something about how other people see these things or how, hey, mm -hmm. how they view them. Because obviously I live in my own uh, bubble, but to come here and hear all of your questions and uh, some things that worry you guys or seeing how you look at even at Instagram, or how you look at my Instagram, I find it quite interesting. Yeah, it's a very big learning experience. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you guys are so welcome. Thanks so a lot for coming.